so good morning good afternoon all uh, uh, here we are going to start uh, speaking about connector framework and ECL migration and the strategy the pain points and everything uh, so to start with um, if uh, as Ven already mentioned if is there any question please uh, start using the chat box and we will take all of them at the end of the session so before we begin, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, so I'm working with uh, RWS as a consultant, and uh, I also has experience of implementation of uh, sites for different site customers from last 11 years. I also have uh, some experience on group share and world server and related product, like language products so RWS group has. So to start with, um, we will first uh, give you an overview what we are going to discuss in the next uh, 35 or 40 minutes. Uh, we will uh, discuss about connector framework and how to enable it for trading and uh, what would be the use cases of this connector framework could be. Uh, here I just put up an example that is Tradian with Aprimo. So that is kind of already available with the Tradian App Store, um, but we will discuss in detail. And also, we will discuss about the migration of legacy ECL data. That means uh, for any certain customer, if anybody is already using external content library and they want to move from their current external content library to a newer system, which already Tridian has to offer, or I mean, it can be extended, it can be customized. So if that kind of... Um, situation came up uh, how we can approach them or, or what we recently did for that and it uh, also has a demo uh, so demo is going to be a pre-recorded session for the sake of time and for the accuracy or for the better experience so we will go through them one by one so let's start with the connector framework uh, i think i know yesterday already uh, provided a, a very good overview over this uh, just to give a brief background, whoever is not yet uh, not able to join those sessions. Uh, it will help uh, SDL Tradian uh, uh, content to mesh up with uh, external content. Uh, external content could be anything. As of now, SDL has a number of uh, connectors already in offer uh, as a uh, paid one uh, i mean as part of uh, app store uh, i mean customer can go and buy them and uh, straight away they can start using them and it will also vastly can be used for multimedia assets from external systems it could be uh, google drive dropbox so anything any 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 social media i think we already set the stage for hackathon also so i think you guys will get some brief idea from your hackathon answer also uh, so this is the Tradian integration framework. Uh, from the image uh, provided in this slide, um, this in, uh, Tradian uh, framework can be plugged with CMS and content delivery uh, wherever it is required as per the project. And uh, as of now, many of our system is already in offer, like Salesforce, Oracle, OpenText, SAP, Dropbox. And these can be directly kind of a plug and play with little bit of customization. This integration framework or connector framework can be implemented through Java or C .net. So there is a option to choose. I mean, it all depends on how customer or uh, system is present. We will now coming towards a section in coming slides. We will discuss about how by default connectors can be enabled to for, for any system. So it's pretty much straightforward. Um, so first, uh, customer need to choose which connector they want to use. Uh, like they have plenty of options from previous slide you can see. So they can choose them and they can choose them from appstore.sdl.com. They can download that to their environment and from add-on service screen, they can upload those connectors to their SDL Tradian ecology. So from add-on service, uh, they can upload whatever the uh, package has been installed from appstore.sdl.com. 
most of the connectors comes with a configuration file in JSON format. Now, why configuration file is required? Because all these connectors will require some permission, some API keys, or well, that, that, that could be a number of other things like API URL. So to maintain them, um, these configuration files are required. <clears throat> so there is a small note. Uh, so this most of the App Store uh, connectors used to come along with a sample configuration file and that could be extended or customized as per the customer need. Now, those configuration files need to be edited, uh, put all the details as required. Again, go to the add-on screen, uh, select the connector which is already uploaded, and there would be another button which will allow to upload the JSON file or the configuration file through the upload button. And as soon as it goes success or uh, 100% it will be success, but in case is there any error, uh, you guys can uh, have a look and sort them out. And after success, editor or uh, developer or customer can straight away go to their CMS region and they just need to refresh their CMS to start seeing their uh, connector. I will. Uh, come to this section configuring a connector so there would be a, a small note which uh, everybody uh, need to keep in mind so all the connectors comes all the connectors from app stores um, or the custom file it always comes with a manifest file so this manifest file maintain the jar file or the dll file uh, definition and the name of the connector so those need to be in sync uh nobody can uh, i mean anybody can't put any name uh, to configure the connector now the last step once everything is visible from cms the last step would be all ecl uh, external content uh, started appearing within tritian that will create uh, before using them within a component or as a content th those uh, content will create a step component or the multimedia component in a specified folder. So that also need to be configured in the JSON file. And it will also have a multimedia schema, a new multimedia schema, which will define those multimedia components. So that means going forward, once connector framework is enabled within Tradian system, there will be two new content type or two new item will be available. One is a uh, one new multimeter schema and multimeter components for respective ECL items or external content uh, items. Now, multimedia schema, most of the projects, there would be an option to allow the type of image within a component. Let's say I have an image and till now I am allowing uh, a default multimedia image. But if I want to start using external content library image, I need to allow those multimedia schemas. And the same goes with the component templates. If any component templates is already linked with any multimedia schema, those need to be updated. If those component templates need to use those external contents or those ECL uh, stub components. This is here we are going to discuss about the custom connector. So this custom, uh, this connector framework can be installed and can be extended. It is not always required that uh, somebody need to stick to what SDL has to offer. Somebody can extend a uh, default connector framework and they can create their own. So to do, do uh, so <laughs> I'm so sorry. So to do that, uh, there would be a prerequisite uh, for .NET. Uh, environment, there is a prerequisite of 2.2.NET Core SDK, and they need to follow the certain step. Uh, so this connector framework provides a basic uh, structure of the project. If they try to install Tradian connector dot template from their command prompt, so what this uh, basic project gives, it gives entity types, capability implementation, some test data, some icons add-on files for manifest and configuration files we will disc we will 
go through them in detail uh, as part of demo. So as of now, it is pretty much straightforward. On the next step, once we will extend it our uh, code from the default uh, connector framework code, we need to build our project. So as soon as we will build, we will have our zip file as a package and a JSON file. So the bullet point number three and four talks about we will have a package that is a zip file which can be uploaded to the add-on service and also a project name dot json that can be uploaded as a part of configuration file and once everything is done all are success um, developer writer or customer can directly go ahead and refresh their cms if it is rated to ecl uh, uh, external content library related connector integration and cms will start showing that connector as a separate node uh, below the category keyword node so now we do have the let's say uh, we have extended and implemented a new custom connector for a new uh, digital asset management system and we are able to see them we can manually attach them also but let's think about a situation where we have a legacy system let's say where 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 we already have uh, external contents uh, present in uh, existing trading system and customer wants to move away to a newer system so for that we need to do a migration now when migration comes that means a uh, system or trading ecology is in place for uh, quite some time and it leads to a certain pain points should I, I should say uh, because so uh, during the course of time many things happen many customization happen and maybe those are not in track so migration is not always a straightforward it could be a pain for also so we need to have a certain strategy so before going ahead to the particularly ECL related strategy ECL uh, migration project uh, related strategy we will uh, have a basic uh, migration project strategy which is mostly followed in uh, IT industry one is Big Bang that means we will uh, pick everything from the legacy system uh, restore everything in the new newer system we will uh, switch off live environment for certain time so that that will be a certain downtime we will do all the configuration and everything once everything is done all set up we will switch on live system so that is one way to do the other way would be the trickle that means there would be two parallel environment will going on one would be as it is from the legacy the parallel environment will start uh, implementing the newer system once everything is tested and everything is done we will switch it over so there will be no downtime on the live system but there would be a requirement of the delta migration <coughs> uh, during the whole course of development of the parallel environment there would be a delta content would be created on the legacy system so that need to be taken care of now why strategy is important so the first and foremost if strategy is correct then we can go with any project with uh, the for the first uh, target it will be correct and it will go very very smoothly time is money if it does not go smoothly it will started acquiring more and more time that means customer need to pay more and more out. Uh, spend more and more time on the infrastructure on the resource on the and on the everything on the licensing cost of the legacy versus new system so time is very very important correct integration of all pieces is very much required that means whatever the integration points present for the legacy system everything need to be created and tested for the new system reuse and retain that means as much logic or as much uh, uh, custom implementation can be reused or written it will save time cost and everything and everything if all these points go smooth customer would be happy so thumbs will be up else I don't know the direction of the thumbs so let's uh, go to the next slide there will be certain pain points uh, which mostly used to happen that is whenever uh, any project starts with this kind of migration there would be a two system legacy system or the source system 
a new system or the destination system so the correct understanding of source and destination system is very 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 much required identification of limitation of both the system that is also required i mean there should be uh, i mean we are talking about storing content from uh, one system to another system that means the storing of content may be not always the same uh, maybe some system uh, follows the folder concept some uh, contains the metadata concept to categorize the, the there could be a number of other uh, differences impact analysis so all the steps sh if it goes fail there should be an impact and those need to be analyzed and need to be taken care of and need to be discussed with the client so that they can also be ready with their backup plan or whoever the project uh, uh, who, who is the leading the project they can have a backup plan time limit versus cost so if time limit it obvious if time limit goes uh, beyond the project plan uh, cost will grow testing of all scenarios is very very required not only by the project team also by the customer because many point of time it happens that customer customer does not aware of the, all the scenarios even project member does not aware of the, all the scenarios and during higher environment implementation everything started um, going to the wrong direction and correct plan with correct timelines will help all the scenarios to be taken care so migration steps uh, migration steps it is we already discussed so back up everything before start doing anything explore and start understand the source system based on that define and design the migration steps build the migration solutions test as much as possible so test test and test and go live so let's go to the example so recently we have done a project for one of our customer uh, they have a system called media manager for their uh, maintaining their digital assets for their websites and as media manager uh, end of life has been announced uh, they have choose widen as that new system where they want to start consuming their uh, assets i mean uh, pdf images videos and everything so widen does not part of uh, Tradian App Store. It is not yet part of Tradian App Store. So we have started implementing the custom ECL connector. So <clears throat> what we did um, on these triangles, uh, we earlier we have media manager assets. After certain steps, everything started uh, supplying to the client website using widen assets. So before, uh, during this project, what we did, we defined some scopes. We will discuss them. We have analyzed Widen API and Media Manager setup. We have built some script and to migrate the assets from Media Manager to Widen. And we also built some scripts. Uh, it could be a PowerShell or Core Service script. We have built Core Service script uh, to replace MM references with Widen references. And we also have some scripts to do the go live. So let's uh, take a look in detail. So the scope, the first uh, and foremost, what we define and agree with customer is we will create a custom connector using Widen system and it will use widen api so that widen system or that dam system has their api uh, and we also use the trillion connector framework we have we need to migrate all the mm assets or media manager assets to widen we need to replace all the media manager assets as ecl id within a component with corresponding assets which we recently moved to widen we need to replace them and wave application change so that means earlier whatever the media manager assets used to consume by the website it may be possible that after whatever connector we have built they are not uh, equally the same it is possible that uh, the con consuming of the content of those widen assets may be uh, the different way so those uh, logic need to be changed on web application 
now analysis of widen api so widen api is uh, is kind of a, a straightforward like any other third party api so it all uh, it only accepts https request xml http access control allow origin header is uh, set to start there is a limit of 10 calls per second so we need to do some tweak for that uh, during the implementation all uploads require a profile so that means whenever we upload any assets from media manager to widen so there is a concept called profile not the folder so all uploads require a profile now this is the way um, assets got uploaded so this is a kind of uh, api request uh, we have used and this is how we have retrieved the assets from widen so this is a get request so if we have a close look it ends with slash asset slash id so this id is nothing but the asset id of the widen system and it also comes with the expand so that expand gives us asset properties metadata metadata info uh, thumbnail info file properties and everything so that we can use them in our uh, web applications next we have built certain script uh, mostly the five kind of scripts first what we did we fetch all the mm references from all the publications uh, be it localized or not localized uh, for all the components next we have uploaded mm assets to widen third we have created widen stub components because ecl connector has been done so that means we can see them from Tradian, we can browse them from Tradian, but we need to have a stub component which can be attached within a, a component during the replacement of media manager assets. So that is what has been done as a part of fourth script. So we have, we already have all the MM references. So we just replace them with the widen references along with widen stub IDs. And we have created a script to publish the pages and dynamic components. So these are the eight steps uh, we are followed on high level. Uh, identify MM references. First, we identify in the components what are the MM references we have. Second, script to store them along with unique ID within a CSV file. So this unique ID is very much important. So all the MM assets comes with a unique ID. And we can query back to Media Manager database to retrieve corresponding media or file name or title or any other details. Export MM data to new system that is widen. And we, as a first step, we have created all the stub components based on uh, connector framework within a Tridian that is the widen system. Once all the stub components are created, we created a mapping file for all the assets which are in use or in the component. So that means we do have media manager references. That means component ID versus uh, stub ID and uh, uh, ECL ID. Uh, the same kind of details we have retrieved from new system, the corresponding uh, references of widen uh, asset, ECL ID and the stub component ID. Once this kind of input file has been created we executed a script based on that to start replacing them on the component level once all the component got updated we did some modification on web application end to consume those new ecl ids or the uh, video tags or whatever the differences present between mm uh, media manager and widen once that is also done we deployed that to the uh, environment that web application code and we started publishing the content from Tridian so that we can start seeing the content on the website. So listen learned. <clears throat> so during this whole process, um, we learned that file title is not a unique ID for media manager. So in media manager, there is a possibility that one file has, or not one file, multiple file has same title. File name would be the unique media manager id is the unique but not the file title next is process to store asset in a new system that's it to widen widen does not support any folder structure whereas media manager has the folder structure so the question from client is we have categorized all our assets that is so 
20,000 or 30,000 of assets in our, as part of the folder structure. Now, Widen does not have the folder structure, how we can recategorize them. So we have identified the option what Widen has offered, what is the best practices of uh, Widen, and we provided them a mapping file of all the assets. Okay, so asset one stores in Media Manager as part of uh, folder one. Correspondingly, they have created folder one, uh, not folder one, uh, that the similar name of uh, metadata in Widen system, and they have tagged those assets uh, in within their system. But that is done uh, by Widen support team. We does not have any control here, but that is the another lesson learned. Way to use MM assets in Tridian. So. This customer has used Media Manager from last uh, five years or six years. And there are many uh, points where customer is also not aware how or where they have used their Media Manager. Like a simple example would be within RTF field, they have created their custom HTML code uh, along with the ECL ID, not the image URL from Media Manager. And they have also uh, provide all the uh, style and class elements for those images. Now, when we started converting them, uh, we started seeing that um, within RTFLD, if any ECL ID is present from Widen, it is not started picking up corresponding class or style attributes. So we need some change on the web application end so that those can be picked up. So uh, those kind of uh, differences we have identified during the process. Will define test cases and use cases is very, very, very much required. That is what we have learned because because it is it is not hundred percent covered during the process. That is why this kind of miss happen. Testing, uh, we did lots of testing. Even customer has lots of testing because, but the due to the lack of all the scenarios, we missed something, but we have fixed them. And go life plan. So go life plan with lots of buffer would be very, very uh, a kind of a optimum situation, but time is money. So it is not always possible, but that is a kind of uh, optimum solution or the lesson learned, I would say. So here we comes with the demo. So as part of demo, we will cover following points. First, how to install connector framework for to start the custom implementation how to set up the widen project. We will explain connector capabilities, how to modify JSON and manifest file. We will show how to enable that widen connector on Tridian through add-on service. And we will also discuss about the CMS elements, how to start using the widen asset. That means all the scripts we have created and what is the ideology for that. So this is going to be a pre-recording session and so uh, during any course of this uh, video, this is recorded by me only, but during this, uh, any any course of video, if you have any question, please post them. So during this video, I will put myself in mute and we'll go from there. So I will try to pause it for a moment and I will try to mute myself or, or, or let, let, let's so let's start with the demo. <clears throat> so first, uh, we will go to the documentation. Uh, let's see what docs.sdl.com says to prepare the environment uh, for connector framework, install connector framework, and how we can extend it. So to do that, uh, there would be a prerequisite. Your system should have a .NET Core 2.2. So if it is not present on your machine, open that link and install it. So next step would be we will open command prompt and we will uh, run following command. This will help to install uh, connector framework templates on the local machine. So it is getting installed and success. Now next we will create a folder structure on local machine where you want to put up the project for connector framework.
now we will uh, go to the next command so this command will help us to install uh, the basic project setup from NuGet package here we have an option to provide the name of the project whatever the name you want you can provide in the place of project underscore name so just copy that paste that on command prompt the command prompt location should be the same folder structure where you have created your folder sometime back so let's paste it delete the project name put some name of your choice and uh, press enter so this name will be the name of your solution visual studio solution it is getting ready yep now <clears throat> next we will go to the folder structure and now we can see that there would be a new visual studio solution has been installed along with certain folder structure each folder will have certain files manifest.json will help us to upload this connector framework to add-on service we do have json file also but these all are the very basic by default project structure you we can use this as a template we can extend this we will do some coding on top of it and we will continue from there so these many items is already created on the folder structure we already find them we also have manifest.json next we will try to build the project whatever the default project template we got so project has been built we will again go back to the folder structure and now we will find a new folder called add-on package so within add-on folder we will have two new items one is zip file the package which we will upload the next one is the configuration file we both the configuration file is required for this particular uh, connector so we will discuss them in detail so as everything has been done now we will start with uh, extending the project uh, to build the connector for widen so for that uh, we need to do some coding we will use widen api also so let's start that for the sake of uh, timing i have uh, passed this particular step a little bit quickly and we will explain all the details of the files and which is required or not required in detail after this step so let's start with the explanation of the code so first we will uh, go through the sections which we have excluded so i'll show all files you can see some of the folders and files are excluded from the project the one of them is the data we are not going to use it the second one is under the entities we have uh, connector file details and connector thumbnail overlay we are not going to use them and as well as we are not going to use update file service these came as part of the default connector visual studio project now we are on widen default connector connector or cs so this is the starting point of the execution of any connector any kind of connector here we have uh, initiate initialize uh, services folder service file service and download binary service this is the section where uh, connector got initialized for cm and this is the section where execution has been started so first is content manager service so let's go there so this is the section where we 
create the direct link to publish means on publish how ecl id will get resolved and how the url will get formed so that is the purpose of this file we will go back to the and this template segment is for uh, videos so videos for widen videos is to be rendered on iframe so let's go back to the connector yep next is list folder service so as name says is it will list down all the folders for widen there would be a different way you can uh, render create the folder here we are using asset groups so based on assets groups folder will be created based on category also you can create the folders so we will query to the wide end get all the asset groups and pass it to the wide end connector folder here we got the identity and based on the and the folder name so folder name i will tell you so based on the identity it will create the folder and folder name is very important being the name of the folder go back to the connector again yep next is download binary service so this service will help to create the thumbnail for the ecl ids that means on cms if you toggle the view as a card then it will start showing the thumbnails so that is the purpose of this service now we will go back to the connector here we will define the capability connector wide capability and here first we are calling folder service then content manager service then download binary service that means if we use connector at any point of time this is the first point where file uh, code will start execute next is get folder service now list of folders we got now how to get them so here we are passing identity.id that is the name of the folder i mean that is the key on based of which we are querying back and getting all the folders here also we are calling the same uh, folder service entities folder entities i'm so sorry folder entities and again the same way we are passing folder names we got the folder names and based on identity we are creating but here identity we passed as null so it will create the subfolder if any subfolder is present next is list file service so that means once i have list of folder service either i will have a list of subfolder or list of files so that is why these two entities got called based on parent folder name so here also parent identity dot id is the name of the folder and based on that if any file is there within that folder it will return those list of files and we are calling an entity called connector file so within connector file we will retrieve information of the files file names file metadata creation date uh, description it, it, it could be anything file names and everything and if we scroll down more you can find that yep so these are the it these whatever metadata we re retrieved we are passing them to the schema and storing them in the schema as a description title and metadata tags so the next section is uh, define entity capability metadata where we are calling list file service and get folder service so both will render within the list of folder service as a subfolder or the file contents now next is get file service 
<clears throat> so let's go to that file. Yep. So here we are passing the identity.id as the name of the file. So that means if we <clears throat> double click on any ECL ID, it will open a stop component and it will start showing all the metadata and everything based on this entity and it will internally call the same uh, file entity from here we are calling get file service and download binary service and that is how whole connector is working if we scroll on more now we clear all the capability that means and we set everything as a null under the stop method that means whole connector framework is getting stopped now i mean we are not using it we are done with everything so next is manifest.json so manifest.json the purpose is here we can describe who id name who is the author who has created this the description uh, configuration file is required or not and those kind of details for add-on uh, package this is the section for the json api has two kind of version version one and version two we are using both of them we do have client secret and asset uh, group based on which folder got created and display name is widened we have set it up subfolder is that and privilege account name is administrator so these three parameters are required so in tradient uh, as of now there is no widen related connector is present so we are now uploading the package here we are uploading the JSON file it says success now let's reload the section and yep widen has been appeared so let's browse them So it shows so many folder structure for the demo purpose we have used website not use uh, folder structure and we put up some uh, test files in that yep if i toggle the view i can preview the files so that is happening because of the download binary service so let it come So next we will discuss about the migration scripts <clears throat> so in this file we have retrieved all the media manager references as component id versus ecl component id as an ecl tag and media manager id we are using ecl service and core service to retrieve them for each component if we look closely let's say for the first component there are three entries so that means one component has three ecl ids and first one is different and second two is the same id so it is possible right in one component there will be a same image has been used multiple times so that is the peculiar case we have here and this is how we have created one csv file out of all the components for all the publications next we have created the stub uh, components based on the images uploaded back to widen so here we do have file names versus new ecl id uh, whichever got uploaded back to widen and ecl component id versus the same ecl id so here we have used file name as a unique id a unique identification here, this is the mapping file here we have put up component id versus ecl component id of media manager versus new widen ids i mean ecl ids and stub ids that means my script will now go to the each component try to identify it has following stub component id versus ecl tag or not from media manager and it will replace with the new widen ids so that is the whole idea so the whole idea so here our demo is ends so for the mapping file i just want to add uh, one small point so how we identify 
the mapping file <clears throat> so based on unique mmid what we have from init the first file we have queried back to the media manager database to retrieve image ids or image names we do have the same image names present as part of the widen and we have matched them to create that mapping file so that is the whole idea of creating that mapping file so thank you for watching this